welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be continuing in my reviews of the entire Friday the 13th franchise, and today we're up to Jason Lives, and what a perfect day to talk about Jason Lives, the best Friday the 13th film. Then on Friday the 13th, October 13th, 2023, couldn't pick a better day, and Jason Lives for me, is the pinnacle of the Friday the 13th franchise. This came out one year after Friday the 13th, A New Beginning, which was supposed to bring the Friday the 13th franchise to a different level. We were going to remove Jason while having a character that still looks like Jason, acts like Jason in it, but we weren't going to have Jason Voorhees himself. He's been dead since Friday the 13th, the final chapter. But yet, we wanted to continue with the Tommy Jarvis storyline in Friday the 13th, A New Beginning, and we are going to continue with that again. And again, it's a pretty big time jump. We don't know how many years but between friday the 13th which only came out about three years before this and then this one coming out in 1986 tommy jarvis has aged about 10 years over that time even though the films have only gone on about three years in that amount of time so that's your first leap in logic but the director of this movie tom mclaughlin he had only actually seen the original friday the 13th film so he went down to paramount studios watched them all he approached the studio and said if i'm gonna do this i want to do it my way i want it to be very tongue-in-cheek very wink at the camera you know just have fun he's like i know the difference between a film and a movie and i want to make a movie something that's going to entertain these people and i think that's what the friday the 13th franchise needed these were always a lot of fun but in the early part of the this franchise they were trying to take things a little bit too seriously and they weren't leaning into what makes this franchise great you know we got to have some humor in there and that's why i actually really like a new beginning i know people get really upset that jason's not in there but that movie is a lot of fun it's really funny you just kind of got to ignore the fact that it's roy the ambulance driver but in this movie we started off again tommy is no longer a mute him and his buddy are going to the cemetery just because he has to know if jason's dead for some reason even though everybody has known that jason's dead he has to go he digs him up he's covered in worms and disgusting and he decides, you know what, I'm going to put a spike through his heart. When he does that, that spike is struck by lightning. And of course, Jason comes back to life. And I love this opening scene with the thunder and the lightning. Jason starts his killing spree again. Of course, he slices at the camera. We get our nice James Bond spoof opening, which I absolutely love, which should tell you everything you need to know about this movie is we're just going to have a lot of fun. You get the great Alice Cooper song, The Man Behind the Mask. The man behind the You also hear teenage Frankenstein. I remember you said so the soundtrack is great. The score that accompanies it is great. We also get to see the campers for once. We always see the camp counselors getting killed at Camp Crystal Lake, but we never get to see the actual campers. And for the first time, we actually get them there. Even though this is a summer camp, it feels like a fall movie. There's even a scene where Jason goes into one of the cabins and we see his feet and there's leaves blowing all around him. So it feels very much like a movie that takes place in autumn, even though obviously it's summer camp. We even get a great paintball scene in this movie where once someone tries to shoot Jason with a paintball gun. And of course, he brutally murders them. There's a bunch of great kills in this movie, including one of my favorites when they're driving around in a Winnebago. Jason takes some girl's head and just plows it into the side, and we see the indent in the side of the van. And that's right before he kills this other guy and, and flips the Winnebago over. And Jason, because Jason just absolutely hates doors, he blows the top off this door and just jumps out like, eh. I've already been dead. Nothing's gonna hurt me. So this movie's just filled with great kills, a plenty of great horror and slasher tropes, including the sheriff not believing what's going on despite being shown fact after fact after fact. You know, this town wants to get away from the stigma that is Jason. They've even changed the name from Crystal Lake to Forest Green because, you know what? That's a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Jason's not coming back. Even if Jason's standing right in front of the sheriff, which eventually happens, and then he finally believes, this guy will just not have it. He's got to keep this town in order, and plus now his daughter is attracted to serial killers, or at least people who are obsessed with serial killers, so she's got to think for Tommy Jarvis. I don't blame the sheriff for wanting his daughter to stay away from him, but if you keep telling her no, that's all she's going to want. She's going to want that guy, and she really wants that guy. And can you blame her? She's driving around in that beautiful red Trans Am. She needs a man in the passenger seat. And I love those scenes also. That's again where we get the great music playing and they're on that chase. I mean, this movie is just so well shot. It's just so fun. Is the acting good? Absolutely not. It's a Friday the 13th film, but it's still a really enjoyable one. One that you're just going to have a blast. This is the one I have to watch every single spooky season because it just feels like the perfect spooky season movie. It's not taking itself too seriously. You're just there to have a good time. Watch Jason blow through all these teenagers and these all these people in this town who are all assholes to themselves. And that's what you're there to do. And the director of this movie, Tom McLaughlin, knew exactly what kind of movie he was making. I really wish they would have stayed on this track, but unfortunately, the next 
next film in the franchise is The New Blood, which is one of the worst. So, unfortunately, they couldn't continue this trend. Eventually, they kind of found their way back to it. But nothing will ever hit the peak that is Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. So, even if you don't want to check out this Shout Factory Blu-ray that we're going to talk about right now, I highly recommend you check out this one because it is the best in the franchise, in my opinion. But anyway, guys, before we talk about the Scream Factory Blu-ray, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, lists, podcasts, and shorts, we try and do them all here on the channel, and nothing helps the channel out more than by just simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Well, here it is, my trusty 2020 Scream Factory entire franchise of Friday the 13th in this beautiful, nice, hard packaging that I absolutely love. And we are going to go inside this package and we are going to grab Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. This also actually happens to have the best poster design for any of the Friday the 13th films, in my opinion. I loved what they were going for here with the mask and the light shining through it. You come inside, it's a one-disc set, and just like all the others in this, they wanted to keep it uniform, so you get some interior box art, which is awesome. Great disc design for Jason Lives, but this one is one of the ones in here that didn't receive a brand new 4K scan, which surprised me. I always thought Jason Lives was one of the more popular ones in the franchise, so I thought it might get one. But unfortunately, the only thing that's new on here is a brand new audio commentary track, and there was already previously released three of them. So now there's four audio commentary tracks, so if you're a fan of audio commentary tracks... You get a bunch on here, including a new one with a bunch of the actors, which is really cool. I always appreciate them adding extras because, like we've said in previous reviews, there is a full bonus disc at the very end of this box set, but they still include extras on the disc, including a, it's only very it's only 13 minutes, but they did include a nice making of documentary, really picking the brain of the director, and I really did appreciate that. I would have liked a little bit more, and we also get the idea for his ending of this movie, what he really wanted to do. He's like, we've seen Jason's mom. Now let's see Mr. Voorhees. So originally he intended for the caretaker of this movie, the caretaker at the cemetery, who we see die later in the film. He was going to be taking care of Mr. and Mrs. Voorhees' graves. So you get to see a storyboard version of that ending here in this film, which is pretty cool. The director introduces it, explains his thoughts on it. So that's a really cool extra. You get some other TV spots. You know, the Lost Tales of Camp Blood Part 6, because they've had one of those on each of the movies so far. So there's a good amount of extras on here. There's also two audio tracks on here. So just like all the other ones, it starts in the 2.0 mono track, but you could switch it to a DTS HD 5.1, which is what I did. I'm always going to go for the 5.1 if it's there but if you're one of those purists and you want to check it out on the original model track it starts there so you got to make sure you switch it to the 5.1 but i thought the 5.1 for this movie is fantastic definitely the best audio i've heard so far five films in and it's not even a new mix i don't know when they originally mixed this one but it's a really solid mix everything is crisp and clear you know obviously this movie features a couple licensed tracks by alice cooper that sounds great the score sounds great the sound effects all sound good the dialogue isn't mixed too low everything is crisp and clear pick a volume that you want to watch this film at set the remote down you don't got to worry for the rest of the movie and then as far as the visuals go unfortunately because this didn't receive a new 4k scan it still looks good but it actually doesn't look as good as a new beginning but it's still better than friday the 13th part 2 and part 3 so so far i would have to say the visuals in this now again it's only a blu-ray so it's not a 4k but a 4k of this i would kill for since this is my favorite friday the 13th film and i think it's very well shot uh, the director even said that this movie would look great in black and white that's how it when he was filming it, what he was going for. So honestly, I would pay pretty good money to see this movie in black and white with Dolby Vision and HDR10 over it. But right now, all we got is this Blu-ray that I'm not too sure when the scan was done. I'm going to guess it was done before. Not this release, but the previous full release of the entire Friday the 13th franchise. Or maybe they did a release sometime in the middle there when Paramount put out their eight films. I'm not too sure, but it's a pretty good scan visually. But you know, the resolution increase really needs to be done, and unfortunately, a lot of the skin just looks flat now, especially when you watch movies that have new scans on them, and especially going from a new beginning, which actually, surprisingly, again, looks better than this movie visually. I'm not too sure why. I'm guessing it's source material, because these were only shot one year apart, and they're both from Paramount, so I assume they're using the same equipment. But for some reason, Jason Lives, in my opinion, just doesn't look as good visually as a new beginning. But both of those films really do need new scans, in my opinion. I highly doubt we're getting them anytime soon, but I would pay money to get Jason Lives in 4K Blu-ray. I still think that's the best in the franchise. And overall, if I was going to give a score of 1 to 10 for the Screen Factory Blu-ray, including the film, the audio, the visuals, and the extras, I'm going to give this one a really solid 8.5 out of 10. It's my favorite in the franchise. I just wish that the Blu-ray kind of lived up to with the actual 
film itself is. But maybe one day down the line. But anyway, guys, it's also Friday. That means it's time for our digital code giveaway. And it's Friday the 13th. And, and it's Friday the 13th. And we're talking about the Friday the 13th franchise. And I have to ask you guys, what is your favorite Friday the 13th film? You guys know mine. It's this one, Jason Lives. But everyone has a different Friday the 13th favorite. You know, some people really like the early films when they're taking it a little bit more seriously. A lot of people like the original. I know a lot of people like the 09 remake. I want to know what is your favorite Friday the 13th film. And you know what? It's spooky season. I want to know who is your favorite 80s slasher. Is it one of the big three like Michael, Jason, or Freddy? Or do you like somebody else? Are you a fan of Leatherface? Are you a fan of Chucky? It doesn't matter who. I just want to know who is your favorite 80s slasher villain. They didn't have to start in the 80s, but they had to actually have a film come out in the 1980s. So even though Leatherface got a start in the 70s, he's around in the 80s in my favorite Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Still directed by Toby Hooper, but I think that was just a lot more fun than the original. And I know a lot of people might think that's sacrilege, but... I really love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre too, so I'm not apologizing for it. But anyway, guys, make sure you leave your comment in the comment section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, get out in those streets, and tell your friends about us. We'll be seeing you around. <laughs>